Ever wondered why our Earth basks in sunlight while space remains eternally dark? Isn't that a paradox? Today we're delving into an intriguing conundrum that's puzzled minds for centuries. Picture our radiant sunlit Earth, a resplendent sphere of blue and green spinning in a void. Now imagine the stark contrast of the seemingly infinite pitch-black expanse of space that surrounds it. It's an image most of us are familiar with, a vivid representation of our existence within the cosmos. This dichotomy between the sunlit Earth and the dark void of space is a paradox that's intrigued scientists and philosophers alike. At first glance, it might not seem like a paradox at all. After all, we've all grown up knowing that our planet is illuminated by the sun, while space, by definition, is a dark, empty void. But here's where the paradox sneaks in. The sun, our primary source of light doesn't just shine on Earth, it sends light in every direction, a ceaseless stream of photons racing away at the speed of light. So, if the sun is continuously spewing out light in all directions, shouldn't space be awash with light? The answer is not as straightforward as you might think. The sunlit Earth versus dark space paradox challenges our common perceptions and understanding of light and darkness. It's a riddle that takes us on a journey through the realms of physics, astronomy, and the very nature of light itself. It forces us to question our understanding of the universe and our place within it. So if the sun sends light everywhere, why is space dark? Hold on to your seats, folks. We're about to embark on a cosmic journey to unravel this mystery. Stay tuned as we explore this paradox, diving deep into the nature of light, the void of space, our sunlit Earth, and finally, wrap up this enigma. Let's unravel this mystery. To comprehend this paradox first, we need to understand light and how it travels. Light, the primary agent through which we perceive the world around us, is an intriguing phenomenon. It's not just the warm rays of the sun or the glow from a lamp. It's a form of energy, a wave that carries information about the world to our eyes. Now light has a few key properties that make it quite unique. One of these is its astonishing speed. Light travels at a mind-boggling speed of roughly 186,000 miles per second. That's so fast that if you could ride a beam of light, you could circle the Earth seven and a half times in just one second. But it's not just the speed that makes light interesting, it's also the way it travels. Light moves in straight lines, that is, unless something interferes with its path. This could be anything from a mirror reflecting light to a lens bending it, or even a black hole's gravity pulling it in. Now, let's talk about visibility. We perceive objects around us when light bounces off them and enters our eyes. This is why we can't see in the dark. There's simply no light to reflect off objects and reach our eyes. Even in the vastness of space, light from distant stars and galaxies can take years, even centuries, to reach us. But when it does, it brings with it a snapshot of the universe as it was all those years ago. So you see, light is more than just a way to brighten up a room. It's our window into the universe, revealing the colors, shapes, and distances of objects around us. It's the reason you can see the words on this screen, or the faces of your loved ones. Remember, we see objects because light reflects off them and enters our eyes. But what happens when there's nothing to reflect off? Space, as the name suggests, is largely just that, space. An almost infinite expanse that seems devoid of anything we can touch, smell, or see. It's a place that's simultaneously filled with sunlight, yet, appears as dark as night to our human eyes. How can this be? Well, let's delve deeper into the void to understand this paradox. Imagine, if you will, a well-lit room. The reason we can see the light is because it's bouncing off objects, the walls, the furniture, even the dust particles floating in the air. Light needs something to reflect off for us to perceive it. Now, if we were to remove everything from that room, leaving only the light source, we'd be left in darkness despite the presence of light. That's essentially what's happening in space. Despite being filled with sunlight, space appears pitch black to us. The sunlight is there, but it has nothing to bounce off. Unlike our hypothetical room, space is not filled with walls, furniture, or even enough dust particles to reflect the light. Space is a vacuum, meaning it's largely devoid of matter. There are some particles scattered here and there, distant stars, planets, asteroids, and bits of cosmic dust, but these are so far apart that they make up only a fraction of the vastness of space. They are like tiny islands in an enormous dark sea, when we look up at the sky during the day we see light because our atmosphere is filled with particles that scatter the sun's rays, creating the blue daylight we are familiar with. But when we gaze out into the depths of space, we see darkness. 
there are simply not enough particles out there to scatter the sunlight and make space appear bright to our eyes. So, in essence, space is dark, not because it's lacking sunlight, but because it's lacking matter. It's a concept that seems counterintuitive, yet it's a fundamental aspect of how we perceive light and darkness. In space's vast emptiness, there's simply not enough matter for the sun's light to bounce off and create the light we associate with our daytime sky. Now let's turn our attention to our home, the Earth. This blue marble we call home is a beacon of light in the darkness of space, and it owes its brilliance to the sun's light and our own atmosphere. When sunlight reaches Earth, it doesn't just touch down and stop. Instead it interacts with the Earth's surface and atmosphere in fascinating ways. Our planet is covered in a wide variety of surfaces, from the deep blue oceans to the lush green forests and the stark white ice caps. Each of these surfaces reflects sunlight in different proportions, a process known as albedo. The higher the albedo, the more light is reflected. Snow, for instance, with its high albedo reflects most of the sunlight that hits it, contributing to the Earth's overall brightness. But the Earth's brilliance isn't just due to reflection. It's also about scattering. As sunlight enters our atmosphere, it encounters molecules and tiny particles that scatter the light in all directions. This scattering is more effective at shorter, bluer wavelengths, which is why the sky appears blue to us during the day. This scattering also helps to illuminate the Earth in space. The scattered light spreads out, reaching even the dark side of our planet, and making the Earth shine in the vast expanse of the cosmos. But what about our atmosphere? This thin layer of gases that envelops us? Well, it plays a massive role too. Without it, sunlight would harshly strike our planet without the softening effect of scattering. The atmosphere acts like a protective blanket, diffusing the sunlight and creating a comfortable environment for life as we know it. And there you have it. Our planet, this blue marble, is not just a passive recipient of the sun's light, it's an active participant in this cosmic dance of illumination, scattering and reflecting sunlight in ways that make it stand out in the dark void of space. So, while space is dark due to a lack of light reflecting matter, Earth shines bright with reflected sunlight. So, we've explored the paradox of the sunlit Earth and the dark space, but what does this all mean? Well, let's take a moment to circle back to the key points from our journey. We started off by pulling back the curtain on the paradox itself. The puzzling contrast between our brightly lit Earth and the deep, dark void of space. Next, we dove headfirst into the world of light, understanding that light travels in a straight line and that it needs something to bounce off to be seen. We learned that the sun's rays, while seemingly omnipresent, are actually quite selective in what they illuminate. From there, we ventured into the vacuum of space, a void without air or matter, with nothing for light to interact with, rendering it a blanket of darkness. It's not that there's no light in space, but rather, there's nothing for that light to hit, and thus, nothing for us to see. Then, we turned our gaze back home, to our Earth, the blue marble. We discovered that our planet's brightness comes from the sun's light reflecting off the Earth's atmosphere and surface. This light is scattered in all directions, some of it reaching our eyes, and voila, we perceive it as daylight. So the paradox of the sunlit Earth versus the dark space isn't really a paradox at all. It's a testament to the complex and fascinating ballet of light, matter and perception. And it's a reminder that even the most commonplace experiences like seeing the Earth in daylight or gazing at the dark night sky are underpinned by intricate cosmic phenomena. Understanding these phenomena not only quenches our curiosity, but also deepens our appreciation for the universe and our place within it. Next time you gaze up at the night sky or feel the sun's warmth on your skin, remember the fascinating paradox of our sunlit Earth against the dark expanse of space.